today we're gonna talk about this again now how to differentiate between spinal cord cross sections at different levels now when you look at the spinal cord you're gonna ask yourself how can i differentiate between different sections of the spinal cord now like i said previously guys when you are collecting sensory information it means you are bringing this information by the dorsal root ganglion from the receptor itself from the let's say my my hand i have someone who touched me so i have a sensation the cell body is in the dorsal root ganglion the same neuron is going to come all the way and enters the spinal cord and it's going to ascend in the in the white matter all right this is not explanation to the tracts i'm just wanna i'm just gonna tell you how to differentiate between different levels in the tracts we're going to talk about it into more details now i have a sensation from that neuron and it came to us or to let's say the white posterior white column so in the white column and of course these sections guys is going to give you the opposite it means that the dark color is your white columns this is the the posterior column this is the uh, lateral column this is the anterior column these are tracts these are myelinated axons remember the introduction these are tracts and the edge shape that looks whitish here is in and actually in, in normal circumstances it's dark in color because it houses the cell bodies and nuclei it's a group of cell bodies and the cell bodies are not myelinated so the edge shape here the edge shape here is actually what it is cell bodies it should be in reality dark okay so what happens here is if i have a sensation and i'm taking those tracks up 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 to the brain great so i have that from the sacral region great this is one track coming from the sacral region what happens in the lumbar what will happen in the lumbar i'm gonna get information from my lumbar region and that will ascend up and i'm adding up to everything going up great now i have an information coming from the thoracic region all right so i have something who touched me in my uh, thoracic region all right and this information came in inside and it went up all the way so what is happening here guys can you see what is happening and then i have information coming from the cervical region let's say okay so here's cervical region so here what's gonna happen is the white matter is getting higher because the sensory tracts are becoming more okay now let's think about the motor tracts what's gonna happen is the same if i have information coming from above in the lateral here and for corticospinal tracts let's say i have information from the cervical region it comes and goes through the of course motor route okay now i have information also to the thoracic region it comes through the corticospinal tract all the way and it goes to the thoracic region okay i have information coming from my brain all the way to the lumbar region so it comes out all right so i have now information coming all the way from the brain corticospinal tract corticospinal corticospinal and it goes to the anterior horn it's gonna go up outside so what happens is as we go up in the spinal cord the white matter is gonna be bigger why bigger because the sensations are adding up every time we are ascending in the spinal cord and what's happening in the motor it's getting less the white the the tracts are getting less so it's the it's the same thing it was more here it gets less here it gets less here as we descend as motor and as we ascend it comes more as sensory so the end result is that the white matter is gonna become more as we get up in the spinal cord that's because the sensory tracts are becoming more as we ascend and the motor tracts are becoming less as we descend so the white matter is going to be more so if you see a spinal cord segment that has more of white matter it means you are higher up great what is the other thing the other thing guys is the um let me just remove here everything um another thing is okay now i can know that this has a lot of white matter this has very less white matter very less white matter okay so it means this should be cervical or thoracic so cervical and thoracic they have the highest amount of white matter how can i differentiate between them can you guys see the lateral horn can you guys see 
What in, which region is this? This is the thoracic. This is the thoracic region. Why? Because in the thorax, we have the autonomic outflow. Remember when I told you posteriorly, we have sensory. Anteriorly, we have motor. And in the, in the middle, we have autonomic innervation. Remember that you've taken already in the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system that the sympathetic is, comes from the thoracic region, thoracolumbar outflow. It's only L1. So we don't usually see it in lumbar region. We see it in the thoracic. All the thoracic region will, will give you uh, uh, autonomic sympathetic outflow. So if you guys see, number one, a huge amount of white matter. Number two, you have lateral horn. This is the thoracic. Okay. I have a huge amount of white matter. I don't have here lateral horn. Thoracic. Perfect. I mean cervical. Perfect. What about the lumbar? In the lumbar region, number one, the white matter is less. The white matter is less than the other one. Number two, can you guys see the, 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 the gray horn? Can you guys see the anterior horn cells? What is this, guys? This is the part that will give you the motor neuron, and we're going to talk about that in more details in the descending columns. And this is actually the neuron that will go all the way to your muscles and make you to move your leg muscles, let's say, okay, in the lumbar region. So here we have bulging muscles in our lower limbs. So this is going to be a big space because we have a lot of neurons here, a lot of neurons. In the thoracic region, they are very small muscles. So the anterior one is so cute and small. In the cervical region, they have big muscles because we have the cervical enlargement and we have the cervical muscles. We have the upper limbs, okay, but we have big amount of white matter. Okay, so guys, is, does it make sense? You don't, you don't need to memorize. You just need to understand what happens, okay? So now you can differentiate between the different regions of the spinal cord. Now, when it comes to the lumbar and sacral region, the biggest amount of anterior horn cell is going to be in the sacral because they are the huge amount of it. It's, it's, it's kind of blocking all the white matter around it. You have very few place for the white matter here, okay, because of the huge amount of anterior horn cells because the sacral segments are giving you a lot of neurons to, to supply the uh, lower limb muscles, all right? So in that case, you guys know the idea of the internal structure of the spinal cord, um, how to differentiate between the different levels and why this is how we differentiate, uh, all right? Um, uh, what else? Okay, so this is just uh, something to end up uh, this uh, video and uh, to prepare you for the next is that, like we said, guys, in our bodies, we have the spinal cord is important because it helps us to feel the sensations in the outside environment. If I'm having a sensation, I need to take this information from the outside environment to my brain because I want to uh, relate that information to what is already registered from my childhood and I try to interpret what's going on. If I don't know this sensation previously, how would I interpret it later on when I grow up? And we're gonna talk about that as we reach the cerebrum and we're gonna see how beautiful our bodies are and you will appreciate everything in neuroanatomy as we proceed in that uh, module, which is a very nice and interesting module. Um, now, in order to take the sensory information, we have three order neurons. We, are, we have friends. Every one of them is going to give the information to the next until we reach the brain where we can feel what's happening. So if you have, let's say, a sensation, I'm not going to talk about a specific sensation now. Let's say this is your hand, okay, and someone touched you here. So you're going to have, uh, going to take it in details in physiology, you will, will form, you will cause deformation of the protein of your receptor. So your receptor is going to fire. That will activate the first order neuron that has its cell body in the dorsal root ganglia. And from the dorsal root ganglia, you're going to go all the way and enter the spinal cord. And once you enter the spinal cord here, and if we say that this is your hand, okay, and you have the sensation, you get it all the way, your cell body is here, you're going to go all the way and stop at that level. This is what we call the first order neuron. Once you give this message to the, 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 the next group, and in that you're going to have a name of the nuclei, the group of cell bodies of the second order neuron, they have names, we're going to memorize them together in the next videos. 
uh, that will send the second order you know and you're gonna ascend you're gonna ascend you're gonna ascend up and once you ascend up if it depends on what kind of ascending tract is it there, there will be a decussation and then you will go all the way up this is a second order neuron second order neuron which is a friend who took the information from the first order the, the third order number three is going to be in the thalamus all the neurons will stop their journey here and they will give the information to the cell bodies of the last order neurons the third and they're going to take this information to the, the brain to the somatosensory area that everything is already registered we know what does that mean what does this mean how do i feel how this is sharp if this is light everything we have it registered here and we're gonna know how inshallah as we proceed in the module and once you get the information you can feel the sensation so what this is what we mean by the ascending tracts now what happens in the descending tract it's the opposite now once i have the sensation reaching my cortex and i can see that there is um there is acute uh, teddy bear or there is let's we are old enough let's see what attracts you guys um there is a nice um a new iphone <laughs> or uh, something that attracts you and you want to you want to take it so you you've seen that with your eyes you got the information this is something beautiful i want to take it i want to have it for myself i have the information in the somatosensory area i appreciate how important this thing to me is so now i'm going to form new tracts and i'm going to give information by only two order neurons one called upper motor neuron that will tell you i want to grab this nice jewelry or iphone take me all the way down to the spinal cord and then we will give the information to the lower motor neuron in the anterior horn cell that will go all the way to my hand so that i can grab this uh, diamond or whatever we've seen we've said a lot of things now let's say it's something precious and you've seen that you had a sensation you feel like i just want to have it and then you will form here it's not it's not it's not that much simple it's going to be a lot complicated later on but we will break it down and we're going to take it one by one and i just want to understand that these things you guys relate them to what happens around you because information is going to be a lot interesting it's not memorization it's just understanding and we will see how our bodies accommodate itself and brings the information from a lot of systems to make you executing the function in a perfect way and getting whatever you need to get all right so in the descending tracts we have upper motor neuron it's a motor neuron it's a neuron that will make you to cause a motor function if it comes from the upper higher centers which means from the brain from the brain stem nuclei from the cerebellum we call it upper motor neuron if it goes all the way and it gives this information in the anterior to the anterior horn cells yani let's just say this is the spinal cord okay all right this is the spinal cord if the information comes all the way to the anterior horn cells it stops at that region and we are sending here the this is what we call the lower motor neuron so do you know do you know now guys the difference between the upper motor neuron and lower it's a motor neuron it's a neuron that makes you to do a function if the information is still coming from higher up this is going to be upper motor neuron and the lesion of that is different than the lower okay we can talk about that later but if it stops here and it's giving the information to the to the to the next group which is the lower motor neuron we call them anterior horn cells anterior horn because this is the anterior horn of the spinal cord cells because they are cells okay so these are the anterior horn cells the lower motor neuron comes out from the motor uh, root and it goes through the the nerve to the muscle and then you're gonna do the motor function um with that i think we are yeah yeah uh, with that we're done with the uh, spinal cord introduction i hope you guys grasp the whole broad concepts about uh, neuroanatomy and uh, i hope that will help you in the coming uh, videos and i hope that you are ready for the ascending and descending tracks in the upcoming videos thank you guys for watching 
and see you in the next video.